So we Welcome to The Quiet Place, the number one podcast for facts about pig dicks. Yeah, we didn't have that pig for very long. <laughs> well, Will wasn't uh, feeling it, feeling like uh, coming on tonight. Um, it's a shame because I was going to get him to tell the, 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 an, an old story from our youth, the pine cone story. You're going to, you guys, you guys ought to, uh, you know. My guess is it involves you shoving a pine cone up your ass. No, but it does involve me in a pine cone. <laughs> <laughs> and he liked Going up your ass. ass. He would regale people with that story every chance he got. Before. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this will individual go to a school with you? Yeah, yeah. Since kindergarten and and all through you know senior year of high school, yeah. And and afterwards, we we were uh, close for a long time. Um, and he just recently reached out and thus became a sometimes occasional you know drop in guest slash co host. Um, Hopefully, you know, he, he drops in again soon. But uh, He seems like a fairly normal person. Yeah. Which so, is, which yeah. makes us question why he hung out with you. He's, he's like, a, he's, I guess he's a good wingman, you know, or something. Like. So you, you, you're saying he's the sidekick? You're not the sidekick? I, I don't know who's the sidekick. I mean, I wasn't I mean, aware. I thought this was an ensemble story, not a, you know, one person, one man show. <laughs> Oh, this is a one-man show. It's the Ben show. I run shit. Uh, you know, I'm the head motherfucker in charge, and you you all are beneath me. So that is true. You were right about Christmas, bloody Christmas. What a huge pile of shit! shit. It was more like Christmas shitty Christmas with the killer <laughs> robot Santa with the laser eyes. I mean, it seemed like it couldn't mi- can't miss prospect you know really? but uh it, it it really was yeah i mean isn't uh, that the most tired thing in the world uh what, killer, killer santa, santa claus no killer clowns are the most tired thing but if they made a killer clown some matter space movie tomorrow you know i would i would still you, watch you'd it. watch a killer clown santa claus movie yeah yeah that okay that's a, there's another million idea christmas um a sequel to killer clowns from outer space but it's a christmas sequel Right, right. There you go. It's kind of like uh, how when uh, one hit wonders would uh, make Christmified versions of their one hit. Now, there, I, I need to say, I need to stress that there was one. Do uh, part, there was one part of this movie that I actually did love. I absolutely loved. I didn't like the way it looked. I didn't like, you know, several things about it. You know, the tired played out, you know, killer Santa with an axe or a hatchet or whatever. But I loved the dialogue between. The, the female lead and her uh, boyfriend or whatever, or her best friend with benefits or whatever he was, uh, their, their dialogue between each other talking about everything from actors to heavy metal is just, it's, it's like how I talk to my coworkers when we're fucking around at work, you know, it's, <laughs> like, it, it's so spot on, you know, it's like, I could have listened to two hours of that, you know, uh, but that's pretty funny. Oh, you know it what this fascinating, killer, Jeremy. What? You know what this killer robot Santa movie needs? Tarantino s dialogue. Yeah. Well, let's give people an idea. I was potentially gonna go meet up with dude. I've blown off twice already, so come on, get a drink with your old pal Robbie. What's up with you two? I just grab me a drink. I saw her out of some tender trash. You didn't talk me out of anything. Christmas. I mean, it's very. Ho ho ho! Merry Christmas. New animatronic state-of-the-art Santa Claus, featured at our own TW Bonkers, is now the subject of international recall. Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> Santa? Oh, what? This guy killed the kid next door! <laughs> that part actually was funny. Look.
Have you heard from the boys down at the scene yet? They're still down there counting bodies. You know, actually, maybe it wasn't so bad after all. Now, I forgot about that part in the police station. It, was a... <laughs> it looks very low budget. It doesn't look good. Like, it looks no. like something maybe you, like, smoke a bowl and, like, put, put on the half watch. But... Did you recognize uh, that one guy, that one police officer who he, he was in 31 by Rob Zombie, you know? Um, his face looks familiar. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He was in Rob Zombie's 31. Uh, so, I mean, they were dealing with like professional actors and that actress, I see a big future for her. Uh, it's just, I think it was the villain himself that, that I, I wasn't feeling as much as I thought I would. And, and not to mention David Harbor from stranger things, uh, was just in a, uh, a, a benevolent Santa movie where uh, he was like, it's like Santa die hard type movie called violent night. At the same time, this is released. I mean, you know, it's like Santa, like Uber action movie, Santa overkill basically. Right. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was edgy. What, what, 40 years ago, maybe, you know, but with tales from the crypt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's pretty, pretty tame. I mean, it's pretty nothing. Silent now. Night, Deadly Night, Christmas Evil. Everybody like intones those two. Like, anytime the subject of Christmas movies is broached, um, Black Christmas. That one <laughs> did not have a Santa that I can recall, or a, a killer Santa, or, or anything. But... The original one didn't. At least uh, there's been like what two or three remakes. Black right. was actually really, really well done. But Silent Night, Deadly Night. Um, I'm amazed it became popular at all. It was just kind of okay. And then the garbage day thing that had <laughs> garbage <laughs> day <laughs> that became a meme. Uh, and Christmas Evil is even more cult now than Silent Night, Deadly Night. And I'm still trying to figure that out. It's it's interesting. I think, uh, what's his name? The Pink Flamingos guy, what's his name? John Waters, yes, yeah. him, him, like. Talking it up so much, I think, made it cold. Christmas Eve, I mean. Yeah. Um, so, that Krampus movie was pretty decent as far as... Yeah, it I like that one. Yeah. There's a few of them. Now, are you talking about the one that ends with spoilers? Uh, them, they're in, they're trapped in a snow globe, like Citizen... Yeah, Earth. that one. Yeah. The, one, the yeah. one that was done by the same people who did Trick or Treat. Right. Okay. Yeah, that um, one was good. Then there were a few low budget ones with the same title, of course, because everybody right. has to ride, you know, on the, the Krampus thing as soon as it became, you know, a BuzzFeed article, you know. Yeah, there are two different Krampus haunted attractions within driving they distance of my house. Oh man, we should, yeah, the, if the I local were there, we would totally be going, man. That would be awesome to have here. Yeah, yeah, the local haunted house is doing a Krampus event uh, for Christmas this year. I mean, it's smart as far as business wise. I mean, yeah, you know. there are other uh, malevolent like Christmas monsters out there. Um, Bill Snickel is another one. Uh, Bill there's um, Snickel. Yeah, there's Isn't there like a Welsh like um, skeleton horse or something that's supposed to. You're supposed to like um, tell it riddles to make it go away. Otherwise, it gets to come in and drink all your rum. Yeah, let's like let's that. see a picture of Bell Snickle. Well, I don't know about that so much, but I can recall a care where the character was featured in Human Centipede by Adam Millard years and years and years ago, back in 2014. That was actually hilarious. It was it was a really well written book, believe it or not. Oh, Bell Snickle is like one word. Okay. Yes, uh, Finkelfoot. No, that's the, that's the protagonist. I think it's been so long. But, uh, yeah, th there were several different Christmas folklore monsters. Uh, <laughs> someone <laughs> someone should make it. A... actually a very talented author. I don't know if you guys know. Who is? Know. I've Adam had this on a Kindle for a while, but I'm, I haven't gotten around to reading it Adam yet. Adam Millard is actually a very, very talented author. I don't know if he still writes, but he should if he does. I mean... <laughs> they should they should do they should make a smart Pete movie. <laughs> whoa, 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 you're here early. What's up? I mean you started you showed a a book cover with my quote on it. I had to show up and well, yeah, <laughs> is Adam Millard still writing? I don't fucking know. Oh, okay. You don't talk to him? <laughs> I don't talk to writers. Writers are fucking gay. 
Well, yeah, but I mean, you kind of discovered him, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. His uh, I, were were we the first ones to publish him? His uh, Amsterdam, Amsterdam right? Probably. I discovered a lot of those guys that don't talk to me anymore. Oh man. So what are you up to, Strange? Uh, drawing comics. What are you up to, Jerry Max? We're talking. We're 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 like doing what you would call a deep dive on uh, movies uh, this holiday season. Christmas we were talking movies, about right? I, Christmas movies, comic movies, James Gunn taking over DC Studios, and how some people want are still are clamoring it. No, I want Zack Snyder back, you know. And you're going to well, take Henry Cavill out out of the Superman movies? No. Yeah, that sounds about right. Well, guess what? I made a Christmas movie, Jeremy Maddox. Yeah, uh, about the Stiff Jobs. Is that what it's called? Stiff Jobs. No, that's a Hitman movie. Oh, okay. Hogan like, Stole Christmas is my Christmas movie. Yes, oh, yeah. okay, okay, that makes more sense. Is that still free on YouTube? No, oh, okay. but you can uh, watch it on Troma now for a four ninety nine a month, and the first month is free. You can get, you can play the trailer uh, from YouTube though. That's what that's YouTube or IMDb. YouTube, I believe there's a new cut of the trailer on YouTube with mm -hmm. the Troma now info, maybe. I don't remember if I made that live or, or if I even put it on YouTube. This is one from 2010. I made um, one. That wouldn't have been it, right? <clears throat> Hang on. Let me look. Okay. I might not have made it. For me, put it in the private chat. Here it is on watch.troma.com. Uh, otherwise, I just see reviews of the movie. Well, you can uh, read some of those if you want. Um, <laughs> is an idea for a Christmas movie, a movie about Zwart Pete. <laughs> Who? About what? Zwart Pete. What's that? Look it up. <laughs> what what am I looking up? Let's see. Hang on. First, uh oh the horror it's a, um, it's a Dutch has... Christmas tradition. Okay, I'll look, look it up here in a minute. You gotta look for the bad reviews. Okay, I don't know if this is good or bad. Uh last year my it, Last year, my senses and threshold for bad taste were both assaulted by Hack Movie's Cockhammer, a farcical tour de force full of... Because okay, this guy's sucking your dick, right? <laughs> I guess so. You want you want a bad review? Are you sure? Uh, I mean... Just, like go to, all... just go they're to IMDB and... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, they're more entertaining uh, if they're bad. Yeah. The ones that are sucking my dick, I mean... Those are fine, I guess. Yeah, just go to IMDb and sort and sort by the uh, bad reviews, by the one star reviews. Let's see if it's on IMDb because it's not. It's it's wanting me to do that free trial thing and and sh show my information if I go on Troma, you know. Uh, yeah, we don't want to do that. I already know where you live, Jeremy. Right. Uh, I, I don't. Well, the it. Troma doesn't. Troma doesn't have the trailer. I'm sending you the trailer right now. Okay. The the, tro the updated Troma now. All it is. The only difference is it's it says you know watch on Troma now. Okay. But in the private chat you've got the. Oops! Well, something just, went wrong. Yeah, I, I don't think I made it. Hang on. God damn it! Oh wait, that's a studio YouTube. Take that I don't think you want to yeah, do that. Yeah, one second. Uh, Ben, what do you think of Carrion's pitch there in the chat? Yeah, you, do you remember when you saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus? That was me. I fucked your mom under the mistletoe. Uh, Eli <laughs> Cash, a witch rapes zombie Santa. Is he referring to a scene from this movie, or is he, or is that his his own pitch? Uh, hang on, let me look at what he's saying. It's probably witch, from my movie. A witch rapes zombie Santa. Is yes. that? <laughs> yes, that's correct. In my Wait, movie, yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, you did. Carrion yes. says he wants to make his own Christmas horror comedy because of your movie. Because of my movie? Yeah. That's good. You yeah, should. He's going to have Ben getting molested by Santa. Is, 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 is his pitch. Okay, Jesus. I think I have the the right link now. Yes, okay. I think I have the right link. That What did that take? Five fucking minutes? I don't Am I a boomer? With... I'm boomering this shit, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Had anything to do with Jesus, but <laughs> okay, here we go. Yes, we go. it works. So this is my uh, my attempt at Christmas cheer. I've actually made a bunch of Christmas shit, but this is my Christmas movie. I don't even like Christmas that much. I don't know why I I always get uh, 
I always get up in the spirit this time of year, man. Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, I've got the spirit. I'm being nice to Jeremy this week. So. I mean, I've also got the spirit. If by spirit you mean vodka. That's exactly what he meant. Jingle bell, jingle all the way. A season for giving. That girl is like 20, by the way. She looks like she's... <laughs> But yeah. when Santa steals some sweet Mary Jane from Seth Gorilla, the Wee Witch, Christmas is fucked. Now, I do remember the comic uh, with Seth Gorilla and Santa, yeah. Motherfuckers. Is he doing an upper decker? <laughs> the sixth film from writer director Kevin Strange, Nixon, Hogan, and motherfucking Santa Claus, and Nixon and Hogan smoke Christmas. Oh yeah, Nixon and Hogan about to save Christmas up in this motherfucking piece. Now streaming exclusively on the Troma Now. Watch the Troma.com. But now I feel like a butthole's asshole that's been fucked all night by a careless and eager teenage butt fucker that hasn't been introduced to the wonders of anal oh. Movies of the future. But now. I can't believe you actually got Santa for your movie. I know. Yeah. Santa, well, he's a big fan. Like mm. Cockhammer. He loves it. I want to see Toxic Crusader drop into Strangeville. It could happen someday, right? Could. Well, yeah. Tromaville makes Strangeville. Could happen any day. Well, I, I, I made a comic of Toxy coming to Strangeville. You did? Oh, that's cool. Yeah. How do how, You mentioned that before. How do I keep forgetting that? Is it still available? Uh, no. Oh. It will be uh, when I print it. I printed, a, I printed um, like 500 uh, little black and white handout versions of it, but those are long gone. I handed those out at conventions all year. And uh, then I colorized it, and I'm going to release it as a full color version, but only um, for purchases. It's free with the purchase of $50 or more at a Strangeville table at a convention. Because I don't have the rights to the trauma characters, so I can't sell it. But I can give it to you if you buy stuff at my table. And how's Space Worms going? Good. I'm uh, color flatting page 106 right now of 164. What I've seen of it so far, uh, where they're they're talking about you know uh, taking over the host, you know, and and debating how to go about it with the different parts and organs. I mean, that was, that was classic. Yeah. Thank you. I I, um, I based it around a few things. Um, I'm really into um, Japanese splatter punk from the uh, like splatter gore movies from the early to mid uh, aughts, like um, Vampire Girl versus Frankenstein Girl, um, like uh, Tokyo Gore Police. Are you guys familiar with those movies? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, I remember seeing a. Uh, Tokyo Gore Police, um, yeah. and um, let's see, I think it's one girl. Machine Girl, um, and I can't remember what it's called, but that one movie with the girl who has a, um, a machine gun come out of her ass. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that's uh, a good one. And yeah. um, Meatball uh, Machine. Is that, uh, is that um, yeah, Meatball Machine is the one that I used as inspiration for this. So Meatball Machine is about aliens that come down and implant themselves into people's brains and then create biomechanical um, weapons on their bodies and then fight each other to eat each other. So the That's alien awesome. race are cannibals, but they <laughs> fight with human avatars in hor hor horrific, bloody, gory, violent fights. And the there's this shy boy and a shy girl that have this little spark of romance at the beginning and then both get taken over by 
uh, alien meatball monsters and have to fight. So it, but in the end, it's the it's the two lovers um, fighting each other with the biomechanical weaponry, and it's very good, very sweet love story. Um, and I, I based uh, yeah, Tokyo Gore Police is great. Also, I based uh, Space Worms around that, and also around uh, James Gunn's Slither. You know, that's about um, uh, worm creatures or slug creatures that take over the brain. But he actually got his the, the idea for Slither is loosely based on uh, Night of the Creeps by Fred Decker, mm-hmm. director of uh, Monster Squad and uh, RoboCop Three. <laughs> Yeah. I'm not Itchy the Killer is good. Um, Cop three. What'd you what'd you say? Itchy the Killer. Itchy the Killer is great. Yeah, uh, I fantastic. think my my favorite. I think my favorite of all those movies is probably um um uh, uh what is it um Tetsuo the Iron Man. Tetsuo the Iron Man's great. Uh, they made a sequel that I haven't watched yet, but it's on Shutter called uh, Tetsuo oh. the. It's uh, called like the Bullet Man, I think. Bullet Man, and then there's... Or maybe that's the third one. Yeah, Bullet Man is the third one. Something Hammer is the second one. Okay. Not Iron Hammer. There's there's another one that's... um, It's not really um, a sequel, but it's almost like a spiritual companion to it called Rubber's Lover, which uh, is a lot more surreal, but I think that's a pretty great one as well. Yeah, I think all of the the modern... Because Tetsuo the Iron Man was uh, late 80s, early 90s, right? Something like that, yeah. It was intentionally filmed in black and white. Yeah, and I, I think that the uh, all of the, the early aught and, and mid-aught um, <clears throat> splatter gore was kind of uh, inspired by Tetsuo the Iron Man. Yeah, there was definitely like a sort of wave of cyberpunk that was um, definitely very like surreal and splattery. Like Akira was probably part of that wave. Like I even have like an Akira jacket. Yeah, I mean, I I think it's in, uh, inarguably the best anime ever made, but someone might argue with that, I suppose. I don't know why. I, would argue with, I mean, I would argue that Cowboy Bebop is, but that's a series, not a movie. Yeah, I'm not uh, I tried also, to watch like, that. I didn't, I didn't get super into it. Also, if if you like the, the Akira movie, I definitely recommend the manga. The manga is amazing. Yeah, I have the first volume of it, but it's um, <clears throat> it's fucking with me because I've seen Akira the movie so many times, and where it diverges is just making my brain hurt. I'm like, <laughs> ah, that's not how I remember that that going. Yeah. Why are they doing this? Because it diverges pretty quickly. Yeah, Within, and like, it the diverges first hundred pages, farther. it goes in a different direction. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they made the movie when the manga was still going, so that's kind of why it diverges so much. Movie. It's the same guy. The director of the movie and animation supervisor is the artist of the anime or of the manga. And so he's he's produce, actively producing monthly pages for his comic book while working on the feature film version of it. I mean, those guys are crazy with their work ethic. Maybe he just decided he wanted to make it, you know, its own unique thing. But, with, you know what I mean? Like, I, I can see, you know, not wanting to... You know, have the movie spoil what you're going to be doing in the comics for years, right? Yeah, and he, yeah, he also actually the fact... it wasn't okay. done. He he completed the movie before the manga was run was finished. That's what I'm saying, right? Like he wouldn't, you wouldn't want to spoil the comics that you're yet to release in a movie version that's released prior to your, your the end of your comics run, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I the thing is that. And like one of the major problems is movies have like budgets with a with a comic like yeah there's uh, it's expensive comics like yeah the um, those ha- obviously need movie, funding yeah. there's those obviously need funding too but you have way more freedom in a comic than you do in a movie oh yeah, yeah. the budget the budgetary constraint for comics is time so if you right. only give an artist uh, thirty days to work he can only do so much but if you give him a year he can produce so much more well you gotta pay them that's what i'm that's what the deal is right i mean i mean there's nothing wrong with paying them i'm just saying it's way more expensive than say writing a novel yeah writing a novel is well i mean depending i guess uh if you're writing a novel for one of the big publishers they pay you a lot but yeah but i'm saying like on spec 
right? If you, you yeah. know, to produce a comic book is what probably takes you three times as long. For sure. Yeah. Well, it depends. Then again, in Japan, the mangaka they can they usually do forty pages in thirty days. To... Well, I'm talking about like a one man dude, right? Like uh, if if you're a solo writer and artist. I mean, it's got to take an inordinate amount of time to well, get through a story. That's the crazy part about the Japanese is that it's it's other than there are some long running. The, the longer you produce a, a manga, the more likely you are to get a team to work with you to uh, to draw the backgrounds for you. Right. But the way I don't know how much you know about the no, I don't go manga on. culture, but so they there's a um, there's a series of monthly catalogs anthology catalogs that come out and are printed on the cheapest yeah. paper possible almost like right. toilet paper level cheap and these um uh shonen jump is the most popular one and so and, and shonen jump is usually two two to three hundred pages a month i think and wow. so you get a ton of these uh 20 to 40 page stories in uh in each month's issue of shonen jump and then the Japanese people vote on which ones are worth are worthy of being published the following month and which ones aren't. Hmm. And so once something gets really like Dragon Ball Z started in Shonen Jump, uh, oh. One Piece, One Punch Man, all of the anime that you would know if you were into anime started as manga in Shonen Jump, usually written and illustrated by one man at 30 to 20 to 40 pages per month and continuously being challenged by new and upcoming mangaka trying to get their stuff popular through the uh through the anthology monthly anthology and so it's really cutthroat and that's why you see so much tna in uh mm -hmm. manga and anime is because that's what they have to draw what the culture is going to respond to and that's what the culture responds to Lots of titties, lots of ass, lots of action, lots of violence and gore, and comedy. Lots of slapstick comedy, and uh, so so that's why hmm. that's the culture of of comics and cartoons in Japan, which is so much cooler than the culture we have here. Because in, yeah. in America, we produce these monthly comic books that are you know the the team that works on the average Spider Man twenty two pager, there could be like eight people right. working on that book. Got your pencil. You got your layout, your writer, your layout guy, your penciler guy, your inker guy, your right. color, your color flatter, your color finisher, uh, your editor. There's so many roles that. Yeah, and part of that is that like most Amer it's kind of the standard for American comics to be in color. Like black and white was the, is the standard for manga. Yeah, so that they can produce them as quick as possible. Right. It's made mm -hmm. to be a low, but it's a, it's a low budget disposable medium in uh, the Japanese culture. Whereas <clears throat> there's, there's a higher production value of even the average floppy uh, monthly floppy in America. So yeah. body hammer. That's right. Tetsuo, the body hammer is the uh, second one. And then bullet man is the third one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wild zero. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just now looking at the comments. Wild zero is a great Japanese, um, action uh horror movie versus yeah versus is great have you guys seen versus oh yeah i haven't seen that one yet oh, is that versus the one where they reincarnate good. over and over to battle yeah well you're, you're you're you love spoiling the very end of the thing but yeah oh, that's, that's what i remember that's what i yeah, most the remember. very end of the thing it is revealed that that's what's happening but uh that movie's great one of the characters has a he has a uh i don't even know how to describe it it's a gun it's it's a it's a sword with a trigger on it. It's like a gun sword. Uh, yeah, and that's also in uh, Final Fantasy, I believe. So they they're, they're that's a popular choice of uh, weaponry over there. Yeah, a popular tr Japanese trope for uh, yeah. fantasy weaponry. Yeah, Unblade, Yeah, uh, dead, dead alive. One, two, three. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what? Wait, how does a gun blade work? What's what's that? What I mean? What does it do? <sighs> Like from what I remember from Final just, Fantasy, they just—it's just like—it's just, just a giant sword with a, a handle like a gun's. I guess it, it can both shoot and slice. You know. I mean, uh, does it have a gun built into it? 
Maybe I it's I honestly like it's way more in. bury nothing bay and nothing gun or something like that. Or is maybe it, you know? charge <laughs> one end and load it at the other, right? I mean <laughs> I'm informed yeah, about Japanese yeah. stuff, but I'm not smelly fucking weed. <laughs> Can you explain the gun blade? I don't remember the gun blade. Does it shoot and uh slice? Yeah. What was the what was up with the gun blade in versus? I'm pretty sure that's how it was. It's been I, like I, 20 years since I watched Versus. Like, I, I don't know about. Great. I don't know about Versus. From what I remember in Final Fantasy, that has also has a gun blade. It's basically just a sword with a handle shaped like a gun. <laughs> that's practical. So Versus was the first movie I saw where a uh, a character. It's like a POV shot. You're the guy getting uh, sliced. And uh, the character comes down straight down the middle with the sword, and it splits the guy in two. And then it, the the body, like the head, uh, splits open, but it stays in frame so that each side of the head is just inside the frame. And then blood, and then blood starts squirting from both sides in the through through the middle, you know, uh, uh, obscuring the frame. Uh, and the and the guy, you know, standing there in the in the I just slashed. You know, slash do stance. Um, super good cinematography on that. Uh, super cool. And that's been that's been replicated a million times. And it was probably done before Versus, but that was the first time I saw. It. Versus is like a very early '90s uh, Japanese action horror movie, and that was the um, the first time I saw someone get sliced directly in half and then have blood obscure the the shot from both sides. I loved the Castlevania anime, uh, even though it was like Americanized. You know, I, I I mean, I thought it nailed everything it needed to, except no Grant from Castlevania three. And everybody kept expecting him each season. But, you know, they from beginning to end, I mean, they mostly got it right on, you know, uh, got a little out there towards the, the final season. But that Castlevania animated, you know, series was right on one of my favorites ever. You know, did you watch the Godzilla animated stuff they put on Netflix? No. I guess I should. They're yeah, they're done in anime style and they're really good. I never liked yep. Godzilla as much, you know. And it's like after watching Kong Skull Island, it's like fuck Godzilla. He didn't deserve to win. <laughs> to me, well, um, I mean, fuck the Americanized versions of Godzilla, but there's a lot of great Japanese Godzilla movies, especially the stuff that was made in the uh, late '90s and early 2000s. They they made a bunch of uh, there was a wave of Godzilla films, a lot of remakes of the uh, 50s, 60s, and 70s stuff, and uh, they with you know updated monster suits, way better visual effects, and uh, a lot of entertaining stuff there. But the uh, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing the, that. The the Godzilla on Netflix is uh, done in anime style and is way more sci-fi. Like the humans, it's it's like set in the far future, and the humans have like cyberpunk tech, and they're trying to fight Godzilla, and it's super cool. Uh, is that, that is that a character cool. that is Biolante uh, the the giant flower monster or mm -hmm. wheat monster or something? Is that right? I don't that, remember which one he is. Carrion is mentioning Godzilla versus Biolante, and I think that's. I don't who, remember ever hearing about that, but I believe um, that's one of the that's one of the more. I mean, I, it may have been an original also, but that's definitely one of the. Uh, if you have the, uh, is it the Showtime, or I think it's the Showtime app has a lot of the um has like four or five of the modern japanese godzilla movies on it huh. that's one of the problems was... with... oh go ahead. go ahead no no go ahead i was gonna say that's one of the problems with streaming like i have netflix and shutter and and like a like sometime i'll be like oh i, I think i want to finally get around to watching twin peaks no that was off netflix last year and is on the fucking uh what showtime app now god damn it <laughs> Yeah, they fucking move shit around like a fucking shell game. So you have to subscribe to this. Then, like, I was, uh, I just got rid of HBO Max to pick up Hulu and Showtime at their Black Friday rates. So I get, like, I get them both for, like, six bucks, both of them. Like, not each. Six bucks for the two combined and uh, a month. So uh, I canceled HBO for a while so I can catch up on the, Showtime and uh, Hulu stuff, but then I went to to look at what the new David, where the new David O. Russell film Amsterdam was. It's on HBO Max. <laughs> God damn it! 
Yeah, is it, yeah. The one good thing is that uh, Tubi has a surprisingly pretty good amount of uh, of stuff on there of movies and shows. Yeah, you never run out of stuff on Tubi. Tubi is a fucking goldmine, especially of cult uh, horror and sci-fi movies. Yeah, like they have almost like like almost all the Argento films on there. I was surprised by that. Yeah, I always look there to see if it's got something that I can't find on Prime or Netflix. And usually yeah. it has it, or a lot of times it does. I, I've since Tubi started cultivating all of that horror and sci-fi and cult classic stuff. I've just been waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, there's no fucking way that that <laughs> that, that gravy train is going to continue forever. It's a free app with thousands of fantastic cult films. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's probably going to collapse too, right? It seems like it would have to. Yeah. Yeah, don't don't step on my dreams. <laughs> Plus, you know, um, when I watch them, I'm probably contributing to it because I watch with an ad blocker. I don't know. I maybe it's, maybe I it's a everything. money laundering scheme, and maybe it'll stay around forever. I do, <laughs> I do everything on the internet with an ad blocker. I'm sorry. <clears throat> well, I use a Roku TV, so I just let the ads play. The, I mean, ads are so. Um, cringe woke these days that i have to mute them because they drive me crazy otherwise mm -hmm. um but yeah i just i let the ads play so i i i pay into the uh subscription model of uh of the ad based free, the free but ad based stuff so they're getting my eyeball dollars yeah because i was watching annihilation on uh amazon's free v the other day which is basically like free movies on prime like right. nearly every commercial was for another free V movie or series. Really? Yeah. It didn't make no sense to me. Now, as you can see, I made so many notes today it, to, to <laughs> not be boring, to not be boring this week that I, 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 there's no way I can fit it all in tonight. But, um, while, we're on, the subject, <laughs> while the, we're on the subject of movies, we were going to talk about skin of rink, which you, uh, introduced, me too um and also gregor you wanted to talk about the the um the what fawn oh well i didn't necessarily really want to talk about it but we i want to know about it i want to hear about it actually okay. a wounded fawn was a you know, horror movie that came out on shutter but uh i'm more interested in hearing you give us your uncle intel information about ai oh, I, I, no i'm not ready for that he's not ready for that yet but he will be coming on in you the can't next give us a teaser weeks. of something i mean you don't even, i don't even know what you're talking about it has yeah, to do, well i mean i don't either that's why i'm saying he knows it okay he works with it every day and he all i know is that it has something to do with something called peak programming and some formula that he something plus GPT. I don't know. It's like it's it's really advanced, you know, mathematics and everything. I can't I can't be the one to divulge it. Have you I ever just, been? I've, ever seen, been I've seen Elon Musk talking about this stuff on Twitter, so I well, vaguely yeah. know what you're talking about. But this it's guy it. follows that same school of thought as Elon Musk, you know. Um, but it's someone I, I I've, I've known for a long time. And uh, they're they're very you know they're very intelligent and very in, invested in in serious work you know um, uh, very rewarding work and uh, they have agreed to come on you know anonymously and uh, uh, it will be it will it will be a fascinating thing um, to hear. Have him you ever been to this person's house? Mm, no. Have they ever been to your house? And have you ever had missing time when you're with that person? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, this is not um, some YouTube backwoods personality, and this is not a conspiracy, quote unquote, theorist. Though that shouldn't matter. Uh, this is someone who who is is a very serious professional. Uh, does very you know things that require great precision. Okay, this is not a fulfilled, very serious. This is okay. Oh no, no, he's the, cool. He's cool too. That's the thing. Very cool. Very, the, very fulfilled. <laughs> Here's the teaser. Is Skynet on the way? Tune into the quiet place to find out. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yeah, synth wave. Right. Um, okay, so no. Are we talking about the what the faded fawn? The how haunted fawn? What? <laughs> I, I thought they uh, were did any of us even watch now. that? What's that? Have any of us even watched that? Yeah, I mean, I Gregor watched did, it, but, but he won't. Why didn't he want okay, to talk? Go ahead and go and what did, what did you think of it, Gregor? What's it about? I mean, I'd probably give it like a 
B minus, you know. What is it again? What is it called? C plus, maybe. What is it called? A wounded fawn. It was okay, on, hang on. Uh, let me pull it up and then shutter. Like it's a shutter original. It's not bad, you know. It's a low budget horror movie, you know. About what's some, it about? Uh, about some creepy dude that kills women and you know the tables get turned, kind of a thing. Essentially, is really the the most cynical way of describing it, you know. Okay, here's the thing. I I've read an article on this just today. Uh, and uh, apparently in the second half, it goes absolutely fucking insane. And not just once, but like over and over. It yeah, it gets insane. pretty It gets pretty wild. I mean, I was, you know, somewhat surprised in the direction it took. It wasn't simply just a, uh, you know, creep creeping on uh, a woman and, you know, stalking her and torturing her and killing her or whatever the case may be. It wasn't really, you know, it started out that way, right? But then it, it morphed into something a little bit more interesting. Hmm. I'm not trying to, I don't want to oversell it because it's right. not like a wonderful movie, right? Well, but I heard it's, it was. It's, it's worth watching for sure. I heard know? it compared to uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow. No, it's not It's not in the same class as that. Okay. I, I couldn't mean, get through that. That made me feel like I was fucking having a bad trip. Yeah, I mean, you, this is not like that. It, I mean, it does not have the feel of uh, Beyond the Black Rainbow at all. You know, that has a more weird you know, hypnotizing, meditative pacing or whatever. And this movie is not like that. It has some surrealistic imagery and stuff, you know, in the, you know, in the second or third act, right? Second and third act. But, you know, it's it's not paced in any way like uh, uh, that Cosmos guys' as movies. Guys That's movies. the guy from uh, that cabin movie where the, the guy and the girl compete over there and they're both writers and they compete. Over storytelling, I, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, I don't know what that is. But I, think, I mean, if you have Shutter, I think you got that you should give this movie a try. And I mean, is it worth watching the trailer? I mean, is it? No, I don't think you should play the trailer. Jeremy doesn't pay for anything; he just pirates the entire internet. Uh, my, excuse me, my deplete, deflated, uh, deflated bank account uh, would beg to differ in my giant needle <clears throat> collection and my giant book collection that I'm trying to sell off would beg to differ that I don't pay for anything. I've paid for far too much, if you ask me. But not uh, streaming services, which is my problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I come and go with those, see? I'm in and out with those, you know? Um, look. What are you paying so for currently? If you got Shutter, it's good. I have Shutter every now and then. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm only subscribed to Coast to Coast AM uh, talk radio. So... Does that have a I, service? Come go, I come and go with uh, Shutter and uh, Disney Plus if there's a good show like Moon Knight on or Loki and uh, HBO Disney, Max. HBO Disney Plus. Like I said, Moon Knight and Loki. Yeah, I'm not ashamed. Of Loki was terrible. <laughs> Loki was like the peak of imagination in Phase Four of Marvel. God. I mean, yeah. I, you know, dude, you're never going to make me ashamed of being a fan. I'm not of trying to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not, uh, uh, Jeremy. <laughs> I don't not understand. In any way, disparaging this the hipster love that you have for these programs. I'm glad that it brings you joy. I really, truly am. <laughs> well, yeah, but you act like I, I'm watching the Care Bears or some shit, and it's not the case. You not <laughs> Care Bears are way cooler than Marvel. The Marvel Bears. <laughs> I mean, what I. Happened? All I'm doing is saying uh, I, I think don't Jeremy really... had a fit and knocked over the camera. <laughs> I'm just saying I don't like Loki. I'm not saying that you're stupid because you like it. Okay, well, maybe I'm in, I, I'm I'm lumping you in with Strange, but he's yeah he's like yeah he's Strange is awesome. saying that you're stupid. Yeah. Like <laughs> I don't understand this. Uh, suddenly, you know, I'm too cool to enjoy a, a Marvel flick that's actually not mindless. I'm not too cool to enjoy Marvel. a good one. Well, right, but you've you've watched some bad ones like Thor: Love and Thunder. You know, and I'm not talk. too cool to to enjoy some bad ones too. I guess mm. really, mm. I just don't enjoy uh, the same bad ones like, you like. I didn't like Wakanda Forever. You know, I mean, without I didn't see that, that without Chadwick Boseman, which without Chadwick Boseman, it's pointless. And I only liked Black Panther in Avengers: Infinity War and Endgame. I didn't necessarily like the first Black Panther. Um, just I don't know, just too far removed from what I'm familiar with, you know, and that, no, that's not a, a anything cryptic to look into either. Just not my thing. Uh, <laughs> the main no, problem with the, the main problem with the, 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 the main problem. 
the main problem with it is Killmonger was right, and the movie tries to convince us he wasn't. I mean, I don't know, but it, it was okay. I mean, it was an okay movie. You know, I, like I mean, it's definitely who, the best uh, Black Panther movie you can expect to ever get. Right? I actually I mean, thought Umbaku was uh, just as compelling a character, though. Uh, besides, uh, it's amazing they're even making that movie. Right. I mean, it's amazing that they're even making those movies. I mean, who would ever thought they would be spending that much money on a Black Panther movie? And in Guardians 3, Adam Warlock, one of my favorite comic book characters ever, is going to be finally materialized in the MCU. I am so and, Yeah, Scott, Scott Bakula is playing him. No, he is not. It's Will Poulter. No, nope, it's Scott Bakula. No, it is not. You know, I used to say when I was a little kid that, like, the number one thing I wanted to see in a live action movie, because... I had the live action Ninja Turtles from the time I was like 11, right? Right. Ninja Turtles came out in 91. Ninja Turtles 2 came out in 92, something like that. 93. Uh, then Michael Bay got a hold of the franchise. And I, oh, sorry. I used to say that I would love to see Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady in a live action movie because I had live action Turtles, but they never did any of the. Um, see there, Greg. Characters. Sorry, I'm just. See there, Gregor. That it is not Scott Bakula. Sorry, strange. I see Scott Bakula. I no, see, you do not. See, Gregor, yes, do you see lighting. Yes, lighting. Yeah, I do. Yeah, More like Scott, Scott back at me. This is so important. This is so important. I know all you fuckers know what I'm about to reference. <laughs> Look to the character that the guy on the right of Will Poulter, uh, uh, Adam Warlock's actor. Look who is who the, the character, the guy to the actor to the right of him. Look who the character he's portraying is. I Read can't that. see it. I can't. The high it. evolutionary. Yes. Oh my God! They're both going to be in one film. Listen to him. Wow. Jeremy. Do you know what that Jeremy, means? Jeremy, you, you need to sell that that yourself means? to Marvel. Do you know Jeremy what that just, came, just came in his pants. Do you know <laughs> what that means? Gonna, Do you know what that means? you're going to pirate the shit out of that movie. Mean? Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? You're going to pirate the Chinese versions with American subtitles. <laughs> it, it means while you're watching it, you're going to shit in your hand and jerk off with it. <laughs> so. Do you so know what that means, though? Do you know what that means? It doesn't mean anything to me. No, yeah, it doesn't. It means, it means uh, D's nuts. The High Evolutionary uh, created Adam Warlock in the Enclave. No, no. He he helped Adam Warlock evolutionary uh, pattern along. Also, High Evolutionary, spoiler, created Rocket Raccoon. He took a bunch of animals and sped up their evolutionary... Oh, I'm, I'm spoiling Guardians 3. You spoil everything, but why, why does any of this matter to you? As a they human spoil being. Avatar 2. Because I love that oh, like uber philosophical, almost Nietzschean, hey. cosmic. Can I please? <laughs> this, this, this Nietzschean. Shut the fuck up. It's not Nietzschean. Yes, it is. What the Nietzsche. fuck are you talking about? Yes, it is Nietzschean. They quote Nietzsche at the beginning of the comic arc. I know what I'm talking Every about. Every pretentious dickbag quotes Nietzsche who doesn't understand no, no, him. No, 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 no. no. Any statement. story with Adam Warlock is far from pretentious. It's about existence. It's about him questioning, you know, his place in. Yeah, Adam in Warlock the world. is far from pretentious. He is. <laughs> He's like a. Uh, uh, isn't he the epitome of pretentious? No. Is he your favorite comic book character? He may be, time? yeah. He may be, yeah. You know what I want, Jeremy? I want a real good Spawn movie, and I'll probably never get it. And I, I you know, back, back, to, back to what I was saying a few minutes ago, I used to I used to dream of the day I would get Krang, the Technodrome, and Bebop and Rocksteady in a live action movie because I was oh, such a Krang. big fan. And now they're in one, right? And now they're in one, and it is one of the worst fucking movies ever made. So sometimes, buddy. Be careful what you fucking wish for. Now, no, no. That, Adam Warlock is yeah, perfect. Like you made a wish on a monkey paw. Adam James Warlock Gun, will be perfect. Adam James Warlock Gun be perfect. And, uh, James Gunn and um, fucking uh, Michael Bay shouldn't be compared. I understand that you're in good hands with James Gunn. That doesn't mean you're going to get your perfect uh, shot for shot um, Adam Warlock character that you seem to love so much. Here's Look, a question. He's even got the gym on his forehead. Look. He's Do got you... the gym on his forehead. It's terrible looking. No, <laughs> he, looks like... he, looks, he looks like a gay. Let's be honest. See, Look at him. knows. It looks like he's. About... This look, is this a live knows action? What I'm talking about. Is this the live action version of Steven Universe? <laughs> God, don't even. He looks I mean, like. Is this really the 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 warlock from the film? <laughs> is this really? Him? Probably in the middle of a fight scene, asshole. He looks like he's about to. His face is about to land directly on a cock. I mean, what is this? I mean, this looks worse than Star Trek. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> all of you. That's why I wanted Will here to provide balance, but he, he the, did. Jeremy, I'm not, show attacking, me a, I'm not attacking you. I'm, I'm just I, saying, I am attacking I'm you. Criticizing show me an Adam Warlock comic <laughs> product. Show what? Show me an Adam Warlock comic book that you own. Um, well, I guess while well, he's doing that to you. Right now? Dude, I have them though. I, I collected Dude. all of the Infinity Watch, all of the Warlock yeah. Chronicles, the entire Infinity Gauntlet, War, and Crusade arcs. Uh, I, I can. I mean, I'm schooled on Adam Warlock. I'm good on is Adam. That, Warlock. Uh, is that Avengers or is that across the whole Infinity Marvel Watch? Universe? No, Infinity Watch was its own branch or corner of the Marvel Comics universe back in the 80s and 90s. Dude, That's just what it was called. That was what the comic Adam was Warlock called. was God for uh, a time, like Thanos. Only Eternity and the Living Tribunal and a bunch of other cosmic beings got together and said, "You're not allowed to have this much power, guy. You got to split up the, the Infinity Stones uh, with uh, with you know, people of your choosing." And he chose Pip the Troll, Drax the Destroyer, Moon Dragon, Gamora, uh, and uh, one other secret one to hold the Reality Stone, which turned out to be Thanos. Uh, in the comics. See, so I'm good on the Adam Warlock this, lore. This sounds like something you read on Wikipedia. Dude, I read it as a child. Uh, and I, I lived it. I lived it. <laughs> Fuck you. I lived it. Uh, I lived the Adam Warlock lore, dude. Seriously. I know about characters in the in that corner of the universe that you will never even know. Well, like I mean, Dark Warlock. Very I will never your character I will obsess never know. Over. Count Abyss, Maya. Uh, no idea. Uh, let's see. Uh, Infinity, uh, 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 Oblivion, uh, Eon, and Epoch. Uh, let's well, see. I've never no heard idea. of anybody that likes. <laughs> I've never heard of any of them. Right. I mean, I haven't heard of any of those people, nor have I heard of anybody so that likes Adam Warlock. The cosmos, <laughs> they're so deep in the cosmos and the afterlife and all this they're other very like, deep. supernatural they're very deep. stuff that they're even beyond the Guardians of the Galaxy, okay? Adam Warlock had his own corner of the universe to deal with, okay? Because only he could, him, him and his friends could. You understand? I was deep in vagina. I, mean, I understand, you but I still don't. I was deep in vagina last night. What's your point? <laughs> good, good. Yes. Well, I'm happy because that's five minutes you weren't involved in. This, <laughs> this, uh, thank, you. Thank, thank you. That's, that, that's very generous to say. <laughs> <laughs> five minutes? Yeah. I mean, do you think that that guy's makeup job and costume looked you good? You think that's really good, Jeremy? Yes. You honestly think that's a good I, a If good. I could put him show side me, by show side. Me. Okay, yeah, well, I'll no, show, yeah, you. Yeah. show show me the comic book version. Okay, at his best. I mean, maybe there's. I, a I guess while he's pulling that up, have have uh, any of you ever seen the Casey Jones fan film? No. Casey Jones fan? No, I have not. Whoa, it's actually really good. It's um, basically like an origin story for Casey Jones from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, yeah, it seems like I have heard of that. It's it's a pretty fun watch and. Like the it's budget definitely issue. shows, yeah. The def the budget definitely shows in the brief scene where Krang and uh, the Ninja Turtles show up, but otherwise it's um. You know what? Maybe awesome. I have seen that. Is it is it Casey Jones and Raph? Are they fighting? Uh, um, soldiers. That happens at the end, but like most of it is basically um like Casey Jones uh, getting beat up by um purple dragons, and so he starts training yeah. to go around and uh, beat up criminals. Okay, bookmark that shit. Okay, I pulled it up. Can you see? Jeremy. Can you see? Jeremy. Can, it look Jeremy. Like that. can you see? Jeremy. Can you see? Can you see? Yes, and okay. Jeremy, if they did this costume and this guy's design exactly as it is here, I would love it. And they just they just don't have the balls to do it. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. Yeah, that looks so wait, awesome. Wait a minute. Kind of gay, I, but awesome. Yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Very gay. Guys, He's definitely gay. You guys yeah. are humping every sentence I've tried to put out tonight. Okay, <laughs> let it breathe. Well, maybe okay. because every sentence you has has enough holes for all of us to fuck. <laughs> yeah. Let it breathe. Okay. No, what I'm getting mute? my dick down in that throat. Breathe. You can mute us all, Jeremy. You have control. Yeah, you can. Me. No, he cannot do that because I am inside his walls, and if he mutes me, I will come out and fuck his eye sockets until look, he look, leaves. Look, 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 this is important. This is very important. Yeah, the conflict ends. Don't be like Zach, okay? Uh -huh. And 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 interrupt just to hear yourself. Now look, look who it That's all right. look who look who all is on their knees around him while okay Thanos is on his knees, Thor is on his knees, <laughs> Nebula They're getting ready to suck his dick. <laughs> Nebula is on his knees. Yeah, Hulk is about to suck his dick. Look at that. Hulk look is at, on his knees. Look at Hulk's mouth. <laughs> He's wide open, and uh, and Thor is back there ready to lick his asshole. 
Well, he's got the stones, so he probably could make that happen. Yeah, yeah. he does have the stones. <laughs> Thanos is like. Look at Thanos looking on envious like that. That's what I'm saying. That's how awesome Adam Warlock was in the comics, dude. For a minute, he was God, and he did it yeah. better than Thanos. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. I understand, Jeremy. Yeah. However, we were comparing the costumes, Jeremy. We're comparing the costumes, which is totally a side issue than what you're talking about. Look, and the costume. Did and Put, the makeup looks terrible. They cannot do that version of Adam Warlock this soon. They have to tell his enclave story, his origin story first. He is an artificial being that became a god. That is a sure. very complex character that cannot all be explored at once. They have to, he didn't, look like to do he didn't look like to... that in his origin story? Huh? Do what? He didn't look like that in his origin story? Probably not. No, he looked like Rocky from Rocky Horror. Uh, well, let's the, see. The blonde, the blonde guy. That's what he looked like in his origins. <laughs> well, kinda, but yeah, I mean, what they sexy. should do is like somehow uh, clone and graft together Kevin Sorbo and David Bowie and have them play <laughs> Adam ah. Warlock. You know? Okay. Uh, his story is going to spread his ass cheeks for, apart for Adam. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> We we I gave up hope on that when Ant Man did not um go into uh into um uh, Thanos's asshole to destroy him. And that would okay, that fun. was a big popular meme. Okay, so back to the Casey Jones <laughs> film and Purple Dragons, right? Very cool. Very okay. cool short film, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. The guy who plays Casey is does a really good job. Nobody's saying they don't like Adam Warlock, uh Jeremy. I don't Tell think me. any of you know Adam Warlock like I do. We don't. Definitely not. I, I we don't, don't. Definitely but don't. I am making fun of him specifically because it pisses me off. Was he a Jack Kirby creation? He's a Stan Lee creation. Was he Stan Lee, Jack Kirby? I think Gregor is. I don't know that. I don't know that part. I know he's saying that <laughs> Stan Lee created them all, right? I know his fictional background uh, very well, though. Well, very well. Doesn't the story go that Jack Kirby left, went and created the new gods at DC, and then came back and got creative control to do stuff at Marvel? Let's see who created Adam Warlock. So that's a good question, actually. Um, he was no, he was uh, yeah, he was created by Stanley and Jack Kirby, and he was originally known as him. I forgot that part when he was created by the Enclave as the first like artificial being or whatever he was called him, just him, and he kidnapped Thor's old lady Sif. Uh, to mate with, uh, so they'll probably leave that part out, unfortunately. But um, but he he because learned his lesson. Yeah, well, yeah, he learned his lesson though. Thor, you know, schooled him and said, "Dude, you can't be doing that with my girl." And he said, "Okay, my bad, dude." You know, <laughs> he's also you know, known as Master of All Souls, right? You know, we have the Marvel Cinematic it's Universe. We have the DC Cinematic it's Universe. Hard. When are we get the? When are we gonna get the Charleston uh, cinematic universe? Uh, we, we got Watchmen. That that's that's that, it. Yeah, <laughs> that's. I mean, that's that, different. No, that's he's right. It's that's, different. No, it is okay. different, and I will, I will, I will defend that to the to the gallows. Now, are you the talking Adam, about the yeah, comics can, that they the, the the rights that they bought? That yes, I mean, you, is what you're talking about, like Shazam the original version to those characters or whatever. Sam was Carlton too, right? Oh no, they're going to use yeah. Uh, so like the, uh, the question, like a, yeah, the question, um, the spider, the black terror, all of those. Right, right. Yeah, we should get. Like we see, should. Yeah. We should. We should have that instead of the MCU and the DCU. No, I'd like to see a good modern shadow movie, the shadow of some sort. Like yeah, here's a, here's a question. A good well, I. You know, It'd be that, nice that to, get a, to get a to get a. Oh, sorry, isn't that bad? No, it's not terrible. No. What is it? It's good for what it was. The Alec Baldwin shadow isn't terrible. Yeah, it was oh, fun. Yeah, Gregor knows a lot about the shadow. He 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 did a kind of feature on here on on the shadow, and the guy wrote like a a, a warehouse of books on the character, right? Like. The way he pumped him out was insane. Correct, yeah, he was one of those pulp writers that just, you know, were like a maniac. Now, is he public like those, domain Like now? those Japanese comic book uh, creators. Is the Shadow pub public domain now? Yeah. Okay. Yep. I don't think so. No, but I yeah, it is. But yeah, that's kind of a good comparison. Like uh, a Japanese manga writers kind of work now how pulp authors used yeah, to work. Yeah, pulp authors work, right. yeah, for sure. But yeah, it would also be nice if we could get a Green Hornet movie where the Green Hornet's not played by motherfucking Seth Rogen. 
shit. I didn't even know they made that. <laughs> I mean, aside from that, it looked, I mean, I haven't seen the film, but it looked like it had a, maybe the appropriate tone, right? No. Seth Rogen was the wrong dude. I don't know why they made that. I mean, because it was, you know, wasn't that, I mean, it was kind of like based off of the spinoff to the old Batman series, right? I mean, it's kind of what it was. That, for. that one was not campy or, or, or goofy. It was, it was a good crime uh, movie and Bruce Lee was in it. I mean, it was, a crime series and Bruce Lee was in it. It wasn't, it wasn't campy like the, the Batman show. I've not seen it. Not nearly as campy, no. Okay. All right. All right. You guys are. Off sensitive everybody's, about your yeah, everybody's getting all uh, yeah, but your pop offensive. culture icons <laughs> <laughs> get real touchy about it. Uh, the Green Hornet is cool, question. and he, he should the Green Hornet is cool, and he he deserves his due. I mean, I like here's the a question to kind of try to cut through Jeremy's fanboyism. Do you really think James Gunn is going to put his all into Guardians Three, considering? Everything Marvel put him through, and the fact that he left to run DC. Do you think I'll he's going to? As soon as no one cuts me off, as soon as no one cuts me off, you think I'll he's going to give him a fuck you on the way out the door, or is he really going to put his heart into that final? I think he's going to. I think he's going to put his heart into it. Frankly, well, you, I, who are you I asking? Mean, didn't he already get? <laughs> didn't he already? Didn't he already get fired once because of the made up bullshit that Mike Clarnovich yeah. came up with? I'm sorry, Stranger. It wasn't made, they, uh, it wasn't uh, made up fair, at all. Jeremy yeah. wants to be heard. Okay, yeah, I thought you Strange was asking me. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um Yeah, I know you're gonna talk over. Go, go Jeremy, go. Yeah, no, see. Okay. So uh, yes, because he is already yes. <laughs> he already sorry, did. I had to. Go ahead. He already did Guardians Three. It's done. It's in the can. They 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 released the trailer. So yeah, he is already if he if he whether he gave his all or not, it's already done. So it's not you're referring to in the future tense. It's I done. No, what I mean, what I mean is business. he he's definitely been in talks and negotiations to become the head of DC Films for a lot longer than Guardians Three has been done. So he was making that film at the same time he was negotiating for a new job, and he had already been fucked by Marvel and rehired. He went over and made a fuck ton of shit for DC. He made the Suicide Squad movie and Peacemaker, then came back for the final Guardians film, knowing that he was going to go back to DC. Yes, I absolutely believe he, he gave his all, and here's why. Because... You can see when he gets going as a creative force, you know, that that he 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 loves the story above ego, you know, his own ego. You can tell. Yeah, I, I think no he cares argument. about I mean, his brand more than he hates Disney's brand, right? You know what I mean? He's definitely one of the best modern. He's definitely top probably three comic book filmmakers of all time. And yeah, he's one of my sure. favorite filmmakers. So I, I'm not d disparaging the guy. Uh, I just want, it's just a weird position to be in. Well, I think that it's a matter of intent, right? I think that maybe what you're describing is going to have an impact on his uh, delivery, you know, the, his delivery of the third film. But I don't think he, he's in any way sabotaging or, you know, deliberately doing anything to sabotage anything. I think he might just be distracted and that might not be good as a result, you know. But I don't think he would actually vindictively, uh, you know, screw up one of his own films because his name's on it you know as to, as like, to what, yeah uh, if he went around if people went around doing that then you know they would never get work by the way uh while we're on the subject of james gunn i just want to to brag for a minute you know that yeah I, send it to me for christmas i was reading him before he was before he guardians of the galaxy was even He's connected to his life okay <clears throat> this was his first novel i'm pretty sure and uh I could let it go, you know, for, for like, dude, that's two completely different guys. What are you talking about? No, this is the James Gunn. No, it's not. There's two. Oh, yeah. There's kind of like two phases oh. to his, I mean, yeah, it's him, but there's kind of like two phases to his career. Like I don't know, maybe more valuable now because of Guardians. Well, wait, wait, wait. Well, maybe... he's, not the, he's not the novelist, James Gunn. He's yes, a completely he different novelist. No, there's two. There's two Gunn, novelists right? that are James Gunn. No, 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 no. This James Gunn is the same one who directed. Yeah. Guardians. Yes. Okay. Okay. Look at. I it. didn't know he wrote. What is the? What is the? What is that book? Is that a okay. novel? Uh, the Toy Collector. He. I think yeah, he wrote several novel. others. Yeah. When did but he write that? Things. What year did he write that? Uh, back I think he was still with Trauma, wasn't he? Two thousand two or two thousand three, I think, something like that. 
Um, I had no idea he wrote novels. Yes, yeah. It's, yeah. Um, oh hell, where where do they usually they usually put it in the front the date right? It's uh, yeah. two thousand. He wrote it was published in two thousand. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, I'd let this go for I don't know. Anyone's interested, just message me, and uh, I, I'd I'd sell it for the right price, like and two or three bucks. Yeah, it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's not exactly a rare uh, book. Maybe the hardcover is, it, but I don't know. This is a this is like a Mandela effect thing. I'm kind of freaking out. I right. know there's a Where different novel. Oh, there is. Oh, there is. You're right. There novel. is. There is. Yeah, there, there are is, two. But... There are two novelists named James Gunn, but James Gunn did write this particular yes. book. Thank you. The, the yeah. one we're talking about, the director. Okay, I just, I just, I knew him before. He, and the book's probably worth about two, two, three dollars. No. <laughs> um, Plus shipping and eighteen dollars for shipping. Everybody. Shipping is ridiculous. Yeah, that's it. The people that undercut you on eBay, it's fucking ridiculous. Selling the the product for less than the shipping. They must be trying to up their reputation or something. Is the only thing I think of. I can think of. Yeah. It's fucking ridiculous to sell something for less than shipping. It's fucking pointless. Yeah, the guy I'm talking about is James E. Gunn. Mm. From this is why this is such a like Mandela effect thing. James E. Gunn is from Kansas City, Missouri. James Gunn is from St. Louis, Missouri. James E. Gunn founded a writing school in Missouri. And now you're telling me that James Gunn, the screenwriter, is also a novelist. That's very yeah. convoluted. They're both from the same state. They're yeah. from you know within uh, 150 miles of each other. And that because the, I, I think they're around the same the age too. No, it says here James James e, 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 the James E Gunn died in 2020. Right. He's a yeah. He was born in like the, the he was almost 100 years old. He was born in 1923. Yeah, so he died in his late 90s. But he founded a, a, a writing school in Missouri. And I thought it was the fucking James Gunn screenwriter that founded that. And I was like, why would James Gunn found a writing school? And so I went searching for the, for the answer. And the answer was it's two different guys, both from Missouri. Wow. But then you just blew my mind that James Gunn is also a novelist. Had no idea. Never knew he, he wrote. Jeremy, I hope you live well, beyond you know, 100 years. Thank you. I will. He still doesn't have the trifecta. He might be a filmmaker and a novelist, but he has not drawn a comic book. I still yeah, hold, I can see. I hold the hat trick. It's like, oh, God, I forgot that James that James Gunn wrote the Scooby-Doo movie. Really? Wrote, yeah. We do, yeah, uh, that that kind of sucked. And he, oh, wrote, uh, he wrote the remake of uh, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah. Something else I need to point out, and I said it before. Zack Snyder uh, I said it, directed it. And yeah. Also, I said this on a previous show, but I want to reiterate because while we're on the somewhat same subject, uh, one of the showrunners on Game of Thrones uh, was also a novelist first with This is Lucky Wonder Boy about an arcade, a mysterious arcade game that a guy is obsessed with tracking down from his youth, and uh, he... he tracks down people who are tangentially associated with the creation of the game. And it was really weird and uh, provoked all these existential questions in him as he goes in search. He can't find the arcade game anywhere or any console version of it. And he goes on this like obsessive Holy Grail search for the game. And uh, th so this is what uh, Daniel Weiss was doing before he was a showrunner for Game of Thrones. Like I said, I know my books and I don't just I don't kiss authors asses. I actually care about the stories that they that come out of them. So I just want to be proud of you for holding up real tangible uh, books. Well, yeah. yeah, I've got them all around me. I'm, I, I I need money more, dude. I need money to. I've got property taxes to worry yeah. about. I've got a, a heater that's slowly going. I've got real life shit to take care of. So most of these books I've read, I'll keep the ones I haven't. But I mean, the ones I have, they got to go. <laughs> Their stories are told. You know. I'm telling you, Jeremy, just start an OnlyFans. I'm with Ben on that. You like all you need to do is post. Luck. All you need to do is post your feet. You don't need to post anything else. <laughs> I don't think you, you want to see that. <laughs> you probably have, Jeremy, honest to God, you probably have better luck listing all those books on eBay than you do no, I tried. on Facebook. I tried. Don't you have like a, is there like a, I know they, they rip you off sometimes, but isn't there like a half price books or something near you? 
I don't know what that is. Uh, I, I tried. I, to paint, I tried selling his pain by Wrath James White. I couldn't sell Wrath James White uh, with with a discount on eBay. Okay. Well, really well, fuck, well, fuck him first of all, but second of all, how long did you leave it on there? It relisted like three times. So did the Howard the Duck Essential Collection Volume well, One. Leave uh, them on there. No, just make a store. Leave the store up. I'm tired of checking and seeing that that no one. You don't have to check them. anything. It'll if something sells, it'll go to your email. Um, let's see. Wait a minute, Why is he acting like he doesn't know how to use eBay? Sell your plasma. I sold. I successfully sold things on eBay, but I make more money like, when I sell it within like. Let me get this out. I make more money on it when I sell it through personally through PayPal. I make more money on it, okay? And also, because uh, eBay takes their cut, and then shipping and all this other bullshit, and they want you to put their label on it and all this bullshit. Here's another one. This is a, a, a Bizarro classic by anyone's definition. Uh, David Barbie, his debut, or no, not his debut, but his second or third best, his best novel overall, A Town Called Suckhole. You know, for sale. Uh, I'll let it go for at a discount. You know, let's talk. Message me if you're interested. Really great book uh, about a guy named Dexter who's like a mutant, lives in the back of a, a dilapidated school bus in the swamps, and uh, you know has to save the day in the town of Suckhole again. Um, you know, message me anyway. Re remind get it, me. Get it off remind Amazon. Me, let him talk. <laughs> get it off Amazon cheaper. Uh, no shipping Prime. Uh, remind me, was that part of the contra the controversial uh, Confederate flag ban on Amazon? It's got a Confederate flag on the cover. Was that part of the? Do you remember that? Of two thousand? No, it's, it is still on Amazon. 13, 14, well, it might be back now. Obviously, the virtue virtue signals are only you know they have an expiration date. But we were hmm. virtue signaling that no. we had to ban the the Confederate flag like ten years ago. That's I don't think Barbie getting, ever said anything about it get, getting taken down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't remember if it was part of that controversy or not. Oh, David Barbie's got a new one out, by the way. What's it called? Does it Jeremy? also have a, a rebel flag on it? <laughs> no, it's called That Ultimo Some Bitch. And uh I, I'm still it? I'm still allowed to talk about the authors, you know, because and there's whatever release. No, you have to have. you have to you have to um <laughs> You, I'm not kidding your asses by talking about it. No, no, no. Listen, you have to uh, refer to them by some uh, cloaked uh, yeah. pseudonym and then bring up their, their books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He roams the outback astride the meanest ostrich alive, a stone-cold killer with bionic six-shooters for hands, on the hunt for wanted outlaws, reptiloid invaders, and scalp-hungry hippies. He has a name. But in this weird western, they all call him that ultimo some bitch. Eh, kind of sounds good. Looks cool. Who published it? Yeah, uh, probably Planet Bizarro. That's that's where everyone publishes now. Um, well, the weird westerns though. That that's Kindle like Scribe. Deathbed. Well, that's self published. No, that's not. You have to scroll down to see the publisher. Clone Warrior. I've never heard who, of them. Who the fuck? That is might. That? that might be. Uh, that might have just be. Barbie publishing it himself then. Right, yeah. Let's if you Google put the that. paperback, it might tell you what... You know. Oh, it came out last year. There's no the, paperback the of it. There There's no one. paperback? Okay. Yeah, it's probably self-published. Well, sometimes they're just not connected. Not that I'm... Do a search and see know, if there's a paperback. Or or by any stretch, I'm just saying. Yeah, we, we support um, self-publishing here. It's perfectly fine. Sure, yes. yeah, no, no, yes, no worries. for certain. Don't be one of those dickholes who's like, you're yeah, self-published. Yeah. No, yeah. I've, I've self-published everything I've I've ever written. So yeah, I don't the see bulk it. of what I've got out there. So I wish he would republish these. I never got to read them, but it, it makes me more curious what they were like. Even Does that though say butcher face, I thought it said butt fuck face. No, <laughs> butcher face <laughs> and the superior, and they I'm were supposed to be being nice to Jeremy this evening. The superior was like <laughs> <laughs> superior. Usually is very uh, uh, you know uh, hyped up, you know, by people who, who got to read it. Uh, Butcher Face has the better cover. I, I'm I'm curious to read them both. I don't know why he's never put. Them I like the I like the other cover better. Uh, Butcher I do Bank. like both those no, covers. Superior or it, Superior well, or whatever it is. Why? I don't know. I, I do like that. It's got a very um uh very uh seventies look to it. Yeah. It does, yeah, yeah. He's a good writer. I believe I've read it. I believe I own and have read a uh, town called Suckle. Uh, he's really. I good. 
I haven't read that one. Um, I did really like, uh, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It was about the, the alcoholic pig man. Oh, bacon fried bastard. Yeah. I that's love that. Yeah, that was yeah. a good one too. <laughs> bacon fried bastard was great. And, and what's the author's not, name? David Barbie. B -A -R -B -E. Oh yeah. Laser B -E. He was yeah, one laser of the house second, on the prairie. That's good. This one is also second, good. Yeah. Uh, second wave uh, eraser head. 2000 uh, circa 2009 to 2012 laser house on the prairie is is uh like a cosmic western um and uh where it succeeds best is is just the imaginative like sandbox potential of all the characters and the uh like popular pop culture characters that they like larp as i don't know it's hard to explain but he pulls it off seamlessly in the story, you know. Bizarro and I'm not. A, hmm? I was gonna say Bizarro as a genre was so rich in that 2009 to 2012, 13, 14 period. Uh, before, well, uh, late late 2013, 14, it started to get. That's when the wokeness started to creep into the culture, and people uh -huh. started to really um, edit and uh, be very careful about what they wrote about subject matter wise before that man it was the wild west and it has some of the most rich and imaginative um like you said character stories and plot lines um i got probably of anything that's ever been written on the small press uh level of, you know especially um after that though zaro can suck a fucking dick oh okay now we were going to talk about okay, yeah rain. And we are leaving it at that. We are not going any further into that. Yes. That was, well, he, that was, he, that was, he was some dangerous the flirtation you had there, uh, Kevin Strange. He brought was, up the fucking books. Why'd you, gotta, why'd you have to bring up a fucking book from 2012? Bizarro. Oh, I mean, it? We can still talk about the books, but we're not going to I'm trying to fucking sell it, man. Yes. <laughs> yes. We're talking about Skin of a Rink now. Yes, Good so, movie. Watch it when it's on Shutter next year. Well, no, wait a minute. Okay. I, I feel like we, we do need to watch this trailer. Um, yeah, trailer is really good. Didn't we already watch this trailer? Did we? Well, I, I remember I sent it to the group chat, but I don't know if we watched it on stream. I'm pretty sure we did. I guess go ahead and watch it again. Strange you, Gregor, will think this is this oh, oh, yeah, go ahead and watch it. I'm happy that you're enjoying it. You should spoil the ending while we're watching this trailer. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out the kids are just stupid. <laughs> that's, that's a in this house. Reveal. In this house. In this house. In this house. In this house, in this particular house, Interesting. Is this a modern film shot on VHS or is this an older film? It's a modern film, yeah. I don't okay. know what it was shot on, but it definitely has that intentional oh, like VHS, VHS scratch and work. Here's the problem. I already know that Gregor and Strange would both find this film pretentious, and that's okay. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm sitting here saying it looks cool because it was shot on VHS. Yeah, I know. But you're I know really not listening to what he's actually saying. Right? I know you'd be disappointed if you actually watch it, which is okay. But uh, no, but yeah, I think I would be too. But no, I don't know if I would be actually. I don't think I would be disappointed. What? I mean, I, I'll, I, I will recommend that both of you can uh, go watch the short film that it's based on. It's on YouTube and it's called Heck. If you like that, you'll definitely like the, the full length I mean, movie. I'll probably just watch the full thing on Shutter. Jeremy's over there fucking <laughs> no selling the shit out of me. <laughs> Didn't even ask my opinion. He's like, oh, well, you won't like it, but here's the trailer. Watch it. 
Yeah, well, uh, cool. what you saw in the trailer, that's basically the, the, the volume and tone it, it, it maintains for the entire movie. That's the... And, that, it's, and it's awesome. I might have to give it a whirl. I'll give it an honest try, but so, the trailer is not getting me. Here's the th- here, here's what it, it it can Ben explain it. I mean, boil it down to its you know core. Spoil it, spoil it, Ben. Spoil it for us. No, I mean, I mean the base the basic plot is uh two kids uh, wake up in the middle of the night to find um, that their parents are missing and that all the uh, windows and doors to the outside have disappeared. That sounds. I mean, I'll premise. give it a shot. If it's if it really is like um, if that is the the pacing and tone of the entire thing, I don't know if I'll be able to get through it. But I couldn't get through Mad God on Shutter. Uh, really, I loved that. The, oh the, man, I loved it. That. Was really cool, yeah. but it was just too much for me. It's oh. so intense, uh, nihilistic, yeah. and intense. That, you know, and never lets up. Yeah, yeah. Skinamarink is in fact very slow, very moody. Um, and uh, it gives you like no answers. It reminds me a uh, not. It, it reminds me in in some ways in the tone of uh, the begotten. Not visually, um, but in the in the tone. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's definitely more focused on tone than it is um, like on a plot or character. But it, uh, but it's definitely still way different from begotten. Yeah, but but well, begotten is based on disturbing visuals. That's the whole. Yeah, the, the focus is on what's disturbing that? Visuals. I, I don't know if I know what you're talking about. What's begotten? You've never seen the begotten? Jeremy, yeah. bring up a trailer for Begotten on YouTube. It's oh, actually really? yeah. Ben, it's I don't know. Be- you've never seen? You never heard? I've of seen Begotten. Yeah, I just McGregor what, hasn't. I it's know. what Marilyn Manson's aesthetic during Antichrist Superstar was based on. Yeah, uh, Manson it, actually hired this guy to do the. Um, videography and photography for the antichrist hmm. era yeah i've not seen this yeah the beginning Very is a good. character that's supposed to be god disemboweling himself a spectacular one of a kind Very disturbing a seductive mystery a rorschach test for the adventurous eye I don't know if it's aged well, to be honest, though. Well, it's it kind of a timeless as, thing. Yeah, it still looks creepy as A fun. remarkable achievement which draws together the stories of epic literature, the boundaries of poetry and experimental film, and breaks all... See what I mean by the tone? It's similar. Possibility. That guy just lays like a lump of clay. The entire movie gets dragged around by... Either druids or his mom, I don't know. <laughs> or his mom. The spirit of Samuel Beckett's life is powerless. I think I was disappointed by it, to be honest. Based on that cover, in the first five minutes, I think I ended up... These visions of suffering give way to equally impassioned... It definitely feels slower in the second half. See what I mean about the tone and pacing, similar to what we just watched. Really heavy experience, rather than witness. Fucking permanent seizure, guys. A cinematic force that bears further observation. That's why Manson does all that seizuring and twitching in the. You know, Christ, I, never, I never made that connection before. You're right. Yeah. A metaphysical splatter film. There is no denying marriage's vision or his conviction. Now you see that? You know, marriage is the guy who directed Shadow of the Vampire 12 years later. Is that the one with the foe? Yes. Really odd. Yeah, uh, I like that movie. It's good. Really it's odd revolution. filmography. I didn't know he directed that. That's a good movie. Yeah. The trailer's already gone too long. If he were trying, yes, they were trying to get like you know, 
Brilliant. How long is this trailer? Three minutes. Extraordinarily. Really? Oh, oh, I'm yeah. sorry, four minutes. Makes the eraser head seem like Ernest Saves Christmas. Yeah. You will not forget it. It's overselling it, yeah. I think this oh, whole thing was just somebody had to deliver first. that one joke. Oh, yeah. no that shit right there. Now, Jeremy, bring up uh, the beautiful people video. Oh, uh, from Manson. Just mute it. Yeah, yeah, just mute it. I mean, I know what you're talking. I can infer what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we don't need to see it. Well, we do. We do have an audience. You know, they might not. They it. don't care about it. <laughs> they might not know this. This is. I mean, it's all transformative content. It is the thing, but well, I mean, if we play the song itself, we'll probably get bonked. But if we just play the music video yeah, um, muted, it should be fine. Is it is it showing? It's not. Is it? No, no. Oh, yeah. Figure this shit out, will you? We've only been doing this for years. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, Jeremy. I mean, Jeremy, you're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> you just can't resist. I'm actually trying this week. I mean. Look, Look at the credits and see if, if that guy directed this particular video. He may not this, have directed uh, this particular video, but he was the... This one looks more like it's inspired by Joel Peter Witkin. Uh, I know, I remember hearing the, the name of this director. I'm pretty sure it is not. Ben is a very cultured individual. I can't remember who directed it, but I'm pretty sure. It doesn't... I don't... I don't they don't I list know. the credits like they used to. Well, you probably have to go to the Wikipedia page then. Oh God! I don't know if I want to rabbit hole this that much, but yeah, he's right that that, that it does he does seize up in several videos like this and well, the, there's a, supposedly he uh, if you play Antichrist alongside Begotten it plays like um, oh Wizard of Oz shit that's and I bet he did mean for it to be that way. <laughs> well, he hired the guy. I he did. hired the dude. Oh, to create I this aesthetic for him. Uh, the are you familiar with uh, Gary Shipley? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, what, what, what's, actually, who's Gary Shipley? And I've heard of heard the name. What he, is it? Yeah, he he's written written a few books. Uh, Dreams um, of Amputation. Terminal Park, Dreams of Amputation, uh, The Unyielding. He actually did write a book that was um, basically a film study of Begotten called You with Your Memory Are Dead. Which I was really disappointed in. For all those years I waited to to read it, it just seemed just. Like, I recently got the uh, Inside the Castle edition of it, hmm. which is different. How? Um, I'm not sure how <laughs> it's different from the original, but I, I'm, I'm guessing the design is different. I was disappointed inside, with it. I, inside I the castle is very focused on like books as objects. I couldn't. That's interesting. I couldn't find the connection to Begotten in my read of it. Maybe. I just wasn't in the right frame of mind or when I wasn't trying, but I couldn't find the connection to begotten personally. It just seemed like just gibberish. I, <laughs> I, I do know that um, Terminal Park is probably one of the most bizarre commentaries on Psycho that I've ever read. It's a commentary. It's not a, no a novel. It is a novel, but it's also like a film study commentary. Okay. It's that kind of book. What's uh, w which of his do you think I would enjoy? Um, I, from what I understand, from what I understand, uh, the Unyielding is his most conventional horror novel. So you're saying I like Some, the most conventional it, type of things? Okay. <laughs> well, that's um, uh, I, like I don't know if you'd want to read like a study of pessimism. Um, no, probably not. I'd yeah, like to read or, something that's like a, that reads like a novel, I guess, is really what I'm... Yeah, so yeah. The Unyielding is probably the best bet. Or read somewhat like a novel, right? I'm not entirely, you know... I mean, I'm not, I'm not, you know... Uh, I can handle uh, unconventional structure and whatnot, right? But Like, like Terminal like Park it. is basically a novel, but it dovetails into very, very bizarre commentary on Psycho. Yeah, I mean, I might have to give it a whirl. Guys, uh, I was still going to do a fictional character spotlight and make try to make oh. that a weekly thing. Fin uh, Fang Foom? Uh, no. That might be. Yeah, that might be. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and go there. Who did you want to do it on? 